my favorite time of year, the season of giving. At America's Finest, we profile individuals that give back throughout the year to a cause that is much bigger than themselves. This month is no different. If you watched our first episode featuring John Wayne Walding, we hope you felt a sense of patriotism and passion. Today, we visit two of his close friends and discuss their causes that are close to Walding. Jacob Schultz of 22 Kill has dedicated his life after service in the Marines to preventing suicide among soldiers and public servants. And Jeff Kyle has not only worked hard to preserve his brother Chris Kyle's legacy, but also to helping military families and first responders through programs of fundraising efforts and direct support of the individual through the American Valor Foundation. Both Jacob and Jeff served our great country and are living examples that a measure of one's life is its service. So Jacob, we're out here at the gun range. You have such an interesting story and kind of that led you to where you're at today with 22 Kill. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, um, I'm a third generation Marine. I uh, knew at a very young age I was going to do that and probably around age eight years old. The oh. following step foot some uh, my grandfather who fought World War II in, uh, on Iwo Jima and uh, my uncle in Vietnam. And so... Um, yeah, I was real close to my grandma growing up, and the way she'd talk about my grandpa, when she'd always swell with pride, and I was like, man, I want her to, when she talks about me, to do that, and so, yeah, I decided early on I was going to be a Marine come hell or high water, and so I did, mm -hmm. and then ended up having a bad day at the office in Iraq in 2004, mm -hmm. which is, uh, that's what it is, nothing more, nothing less, you know, it was a bad day, I mean, Say it so just so casually a bad day at the office, but well, because you know it took me a long time to mentally get where I am, mm -hmm. and um, which is uh, one of the reasons that Twenty Two Kill is so close to me because I've been involved with the since the inception of Twenty Two Kill since it just started off as an initiative and uh, evolved into what it is today, and you know it's I, I've lost more brothers to suicide than I have combat and. You know, it's something that I struggled with, the uh, you know, the thought of eating a bullet for a little over a year when I was at the height of my addiction after I got out of the hospital. And I spent 18 months in the hospital and, uh, you know, stateside I had 46 operations and 23 blood transfusions. And so there was a lot of there there. There's a lot of baggage that can't, comes with that. And, you know, it was tough to, to get off those drugs because, you know, when, when I wasn't high, mm -hmm it was interesting because it was having to reintegrate into society all over again. Every day. And not being numb, you know, mm -hmm. and then so everything became very real again. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were high and always numb, you never felt anything, nothing mattered. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I started doing a lot of public speaking and that started with me speaking to my grandmother's uh, Rotary Club. Really? Yeah, true story. <laughs> and it was terrible. I was sweating grenades. I was going to say, she's probably beaming with pride. You said you always wanted her to feel like that for you. So. Yeah, well, and she probably was, but uh, I knew it was terrible. And <laughs> and uh, But I left there, and I remember when I walked out of there, and I was like, man, you know, my soul felt lighter. And I was like, okay, now I know why she had me do that. Because mm. I was anti-talking to therapists and stuff. Really? Yeah. So you never went to anyone? No. Wow, and that had to be so hard <clears throat> to carry that baggage, though, just of taking that on by yourself, just not to have a release or an outlet. Yeah, well, I mean, luckily I married a woman who's 10 times stronger than I'll ever be, so mm -hmm. she's actually the first intern to work on me in Bethesda, Maryland. Yeah. And so, um, you know, she never even knew me as the Jake before the bomb. You know, my really? family, Yeah, and my family calls her the blessing from the bomb because they they all know and feel like if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't even be talking to you because, uh, you know, she was the one that told me, uh, one night we were in Pensacola, Florida, and uh, well, one bedroom apartment where she was going through flight training, and she came to me in the living room. It was like 11 at night, and um, I was still I was watching TV in my wheelchair. I still wasn't walking well, you know. I was still healing up, and she fell to her knees and looked up at me, and she said, "The difference between you eating a bullet and living the way you're living is time, but the outcome is going to be the same." She said, you're, you're a powerful words. Yeah. And she said, you know, you're slowly killing yourself, Jake. Mm -hmm. And then she said, you, you owe it to your brothers that didn't come home. <clears throat> and those that did and still love and respect you to not only live but live well. Because that's the only way you can truly honor them. That's a great woman. Yeah. And then she said, quit being a selfish bastard. 
And I was like, <laughs> smart woman too. All right. And so I politely asked her to leave the living room and, um, I thought about it and I was like, you know, she's right. And so, you know, it's, it's, uh, carries a lot of weight when someone that, that you love that much and you respect that much says, you know, I love you, but I'm not willing to love you to death. Mm -hmm. And, uh, changes you. Yeah, it did. You know, it was, it was an absolute gut check. And so, you know, I decided that, you know, I've got a, I've got a kid at that point, you know, I'm taking 55 pills three times a day and eating between eight and 12, 400 milligram fentanyl pops a day. I was doing on boatloads of drugs. And so it was tough to come off the drugs, but, um, you know, that's why I always tell people I can say with a hundred percent conviction, I know why addicts stay addicts because mm -hmm. I've been there and that was a hell of a fight. But, Look at you now. I mean, and not everybody, not all veterans have an outlet like your wife or have someone no step doubt. in and be like, Hey, listen, your life is worthy. You need to fight for it. You're absolutely right. Well, 22 kill. I was reading you guys website and it said on there that 22 veterans a day, they think commit suicide. Mm. And that is an unsettling number, especially for the people that fought for our country and they didn't die overseas, but they're coming home and they don't feel like they have anyone to talk to. Yeah. Is that, tell me more about 22 kill. Is that y'all's mission? Yeah, you know, uh, it's definitely a, a sobering number. It's one that a lot of people don't know it. And so that's why with 22 Kill, our first mission is awareness. And that's because um, just like anything else, a common problem remains a common problem until it becomes common knowledge. And, you know, with the AIDS movement, the cancer movement, nothing was done about that stuff until it affected somebody with money and or power. Wow, but, but, the, but what we got on our side is numbers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of warriors that still live in, um, are alive and well in this country. And if we all join together with our families, you know, we could make um, enough of a movement and, sh and rattle enough cages to where something could actually be done. And, you know, maybe something effective could actually be done in Congress, which we all know, you know doesn't happen often. No. And, you know, it is what it is. But that's why we, uh, we bank on grassroots efforts and uh, our supporters, you know, rather they're, they're, from Texas or New York or California, it doesn't matter. We need them all. And, mm -hmm. but yeah, first and foremost is awareness. And that's um, our biggest push right now. The number's actually 20 when, so it went down when the first study came out in 2013 through the VA, both these studies were done by the VA. So the number we don't think is accurate, but mm -hmm. that's because it's the government did it. And really the only two things that they're great at is uh, taking money and spending money. But, um, Amen. <laughs> You know, I'm just talking about facts here, but um, the number in this past uh, last summer actually it was uh, said that it went down to 20. And so, for all intents and purposes, yeah, we're moving in the right direction, albeit very slowly. And um, you know, we offer a lot of programming through 22 Kill in-house programming and other uh, organizations that we're partnered with, and like the, for example, one-on-one -on -one therapies. Mm -hmm. We have a, through a partner we call it's uh they're called Stay the Course, and that's the one-on-one -on -one therapy with not only warriors and their families but first responders and law enforcement and their families. They need it too. Absolutely, because um, I think where we are now with that was uh, every 18 hours a law enforcement officer dies by suicide, and I believe it's every eight a firefighter oh dies by suicide. Oh my gosh! And so, you know, it's um. It's one of those things where I, was, I talked to the board last year and I said, listen, we've got to implement first responders and law enforcement mm -hmm. because they serve just as much as us, if not more. And, On the home front. Yeah, and we couldn't go and do what we do. You know, I, I, I wasn't going to go to a foreign country and kick in a door without knowing that somebody is going to step up and put their life down on the line for my family, whom's never met me. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes it us able to go do what we do. Exactly. And so that's why we say one tribe, one fight. You know, we're all in it together. And I don't think we shouldn't just narrow it down and narrow our scope to just warriors and their families when we have these other men and women who still wear the uniform and still serve. Mm -hmm. And we need to give them the ability to have these outlets where, you know, they maintain that anonymity with their respective departments to where they, they aren't considered a liability to their mm -hmm. department. That's interesting. That's crazy to even think about. And you're a veteran and John Wayne's a veteran. And he was the one that told you that he wanted you to come out today and I'm glad he did, just so that we could talk about PTSD and just the effects that it has. And like you said, the narcotics, no one knows about that. And that's not talked yeah. about very much as far as, and it's not, I wouldn't necessarily blame the doctors because I think they are trying to help 
mm. in the beginning, but just yeah, no, anything like that, it just gets out of hand. So John Wayne told me that you could be the person to talk about him. So where did you guys first meet? That's a terrible idea. Yeah? Oh, no. I thought you guys were pretty close. No, I'm just kidding. No, he's okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, see, J-Dub and I met, uh, I want to say it was a, some event several, several years ago. You know, more than three years ago, yeah. I mean, it's been five or six, seven years. Wow. And, um, yeah, we met. We realized that we live in cities. We're right next to each other. And um, he's just, uh, I love J-Dub because he's just, he's the epitome of a humble guy. You know, he's, he's a very hum humble guy. He loves to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And the same, he's the same thing with him. You know, he, he knew because when he got hit in Afghanistan, for all intents and purposes, fighting off the side of a mountain. And he went through his transition. He struggled too. Mm -hmm. And so, so did I. So we had that connection and uh, knew a lot of the same friends. And he and I have just stuck together. And, you know, he's always supported me with 22 Kill. I've always supported him with Five Toes. And um, it just makes for, you know, it's just a good tribe, man. I and mean, we just got a good tribe that we run with. And it's it may not be huge, but it's... It, most people it's probably, solid. yeah, I mean, it's, it's impenetrable, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, we're, we're all very tight knit and, you know, John Wayne is just a good American. Mm. He's one of those guys where, you know, if either one of my sons ended up being half the guy he was as adults, I would consider that a win, mm. you know? And so it's, uh, I'm thankful for, you know, his friendship, Jeff's friendship. It's, um, it's something that you don't get a whole lot of. In, in a lifetime and you know, I'm a short 35 years old but yeah I've learned three absolutes that one this life's absolutely worth living uh, no matter how hard it gets and two it's absolutely not worth living alone mm -hmm. what makes it beautiful is you get to share it with guys like J-Dub mm -hmm. and uh, three it doesn't have anything to do with me and it's good to have guys like John Wayne around to remind me of that mm -hmm. on a pretty regular basis but he's uh He's a, he's a great example of what a true American should be. And, you know, that guy bleeds red, white, and blue, and <laughs> he's not a, he's not apologetic about it. And, you know, he's just a good family man. He's a great father, and he's a great husband, and he's a great example of, of what it means to be a tried and true American patriot. And he's born 4th of July, so come on. In 2012, the Veterans Administration released a suicide data report that found an average of 22 veterans die from suicide every day. 22 Kill is helping change that statistic. Another member of their tribe is Jeff Kyle, a Marine who brought his family's work ethic with him overseas and continues to preserve his brother's legacy, along with his family, through the American Valor Foundation. So let's talk about you. Who is Jeff Kyle? Born and raised in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, born in Abilene. My, uh, my mom's family was from Abilene. Mm -hmm and some of them are still there now. But uh, my dad, he grew up in Kansas, dirt farmer, and moved to Texas because of my mom. And then I was born in Abilene, and we moved shortly after to uh, Midlothian, just south of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, raised cows, horses, everything like that. Just, you know, simple, simple life. Um, bought the feed store in town so we could get our feed cheaper. Smart. And, yeah. <laughs> And then so we became uh, our dad's, you know, worker bees, mm -hmm. you know, hauling hay every week. He'd come in and tell us, you know, he bought up every field in the county and we'd have to have it up by the end of the night because it was going to rain the next day. So, mm -hmm. you know, hauling hay, feeding cows all day long, every day. Um, stayed in Midlothian, rodeoed all through high school. Um, then after graduated, then moved out and basically never never looked back just kept you know making footprints everywhere else mm -hmm. uh, all over all over the state working different ranches some of the bigger name ranches i've been on um, and then decided to join the military and then that's where that's where life really happened mm -hmm. so you know joined the marine corps in 2000 um, went through boot camp and then got shipped out to my unit and then, uh, of course, 9-11 happened, and, you know, we got stood up and, you know, went to the big show, so. You were ready for it then. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was, I was in during peacetime for a couple of years before anything happened, and 
you know, we were always itching for something to happen, but never knew if anything would. And then lo and behold, it did. And so, you know, we got to, got to put our, our training to some use and, you know, went overseas and, you know, did what we had to do. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I came home, you know, lost, uh, lost a lot of buddies over there. Um, but, you know, I, my family, it's a very small family. You know, we don't, my dad, he was an only child. My mom, she had two sisters. Um, but, you know, one of them doesn't have any children. The other one had two sons. And so we're just, you know, real small. And uh, my family grew exponentially when when I joined the military. You know, I, I was very close, very tight with my family, especially with my brother. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, whenever I joined the military, that that bond that we that I had, you know, with my brothers in the military was, you know, was big, and with their families as well. You know, I'd, mm. you know, we'd always we'd be there when each other's kids were born, and you know, at hospitals when wives were giving birth and stuff like that. So you know, it was just you know, big fat, happy family. Mm. Um, then me and Chris, we. Uh, you know, we we bonded a lot more, got a lot closer over our military service. You know. What was your family's relationship like? Y'all are a tight knit family. Joined mm -hmm. the military, extremely tight knit. So you've always been surrounded by family. Right, right, yeah. Um, you know, it, my parents were always very supportive. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Neither one of my parents ever served. Uh, a lot of people they always think that my dad had served just mm -hmm. because of his mentality and his demeanor and everything, and then because of me and Chris, but. Uh, we were always very tight and very supportive of everything that each other did. Um, but me and Chris, you know, we we were always real close. You know, besides you know typical brother stuff. I was about when to we say, yeah, your brothers. Yeah we, yeah, we fought like cats and dogs. <laughs> but um, you know, we were the only ones that could mess with each other. Mm -hmm. um, but then when we got to the military, that brought us a lot closer. You know, we got to we got to see a lot of things that were the same and experience you know the evils of the world you know at the same time um, but we we were able to decompress with each other so between deployments before deployments we would always make a you know make a note to go see each other and you know mm -hmm. basically say goodbye mm -hmm. just in case um, without saying it and then you know kind of rehash things whenever we'd come home just to you know decompress a little bit but uh, you know, and then after we got out, then, you know, started having kids and right. marriage and life and, you know, everything like that, getting fat and happy and everything. And <laughs> You deserved it. You earned that. <laughs> yeah, well, so, and, you know, knowing John, getting to meet John, uh, you know, Chris and John worked together with mm -hmm. the training company. And then, so that's how I got to know John was through Chris. And, you know, I mean, John's one of those guys that you can't help but like him. I know. You know he's, he's, you know, I mean, I, I've known a lot of guys in my life, especially in this line of work, and it, they're all pretty good guys, but, you know, John is, he's, he's something special. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's helped me through some dark times, especially after what happened to Chris, you know, and, um, you know, of course, we, we got together with the, the training and everything and, you know, get to travel around the country and, you know, teach a lot of, a lot of great Americans how to, how to better handle themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and um, getting into the the speaking world, you know, John, that guy, you know, you can't ever shut him up. So you have to put <laughs> he's a, good at it. Yeah, you have to put a time limit on him whenever he's up on stage talking about anything. You know, me, I'm I'm a little a little quieter. <laughs> That's you know, I was kind of thrust into this position. You know, I was voluntold, is the way I put it. You know, Chris was always the he was the the bright shining star. You know, that everybody wanted to see. And I was, you know, in the shadows doing, you know, doing what we do. Mm -hmm. And then whenever, you know, whenever he left and, you know, I figured, you know, I didn't want anybody else talking about him or continuing what he was doing, you know, somebody from the outside. I, you know, Who knows him better than you? I yeah, mean, you so. guys were so close, like you said. And I've heard from a lot of people that he's not that guy that's an ego hound. Like no. Chris was not that guy that wanted the parades for him. Right. And it wasn't ever about that. It was more about the country. Like right. he didn't want the attention from it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was he was all about using his fame to help others. Mm -hmm. You know, he wouldn't he didn't take anything for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that was 
in a way, it's kind of a downfall because that puts a lot of pressure on him, you know, mm -hmm. home life and things like that. But, you know, it's that's that's who he was. He he didn't he did if he got something later that was fine. You know, he just mm -hmm. he worried about everybody else up front. You know, and I feel that's, like you have the same attribute. You're a very kind person. You came out here to do this for me, so I really appreciate that. Oh, well, you know, anytime anybody you know it appreciates, you know what the military has done, you know, I'm more than happy to, to talk about things, you know, I mean, I don't go around talking about, you know, what I saw, things I did, things like that, you know, it's, it is what it is, you know, we all basically have the same story, mm -hmm. you know, it's war. just, yeah, so, you know, war, it's, it's not fun, mm -hmm. but it's a part of life, you know, it's, it's war, it's gruesome, yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's hell, you know, war is hell, and it, it definitely, you know, everybody always says, well, you know, War changes you. Yeah, it does. I mean, anybody that, anytime somebody's gonna go through that traumatic of an experience mm -hmm. for that period of time, you know, it's gonna it's gonna make you look at life a little different for sure. Um, you know, and people handle it different. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what bothers me is um, you know, like Jake, you know, he runs runs the foundation Twenty Two Kill that they they do so much for the veterans, and you know, I'm a part of you know, our family, we have our own foundation to mm -hmm. do things like that. Um, and we work hand in hand with 22 Kill and a lot of the other foundations. Um, we're kind of a middleman. We we raise money for other foundations okay. because we don't necessarily have one certain thing that we can do. You know, we we can funnel money to other foundations so they can continue to, to help, you know, everybody that needs it. And, you know, that's, that's important to us. Uh, what I tell everybody is, you know, I'm extremely proud of my service. I'm proud to wear the uniform, but I feel like I can serve more now mm -hmm. than what I did when I was in. Because mm -hmm. when I was in, I was with a small group, and those are the only guys that I could touch. You know, I could only reach out to them and their families. But now, you know, I can use my name and the fame of my brother and who he was to reach out, you know, my bandwidth has grown. And it's not even to, for money. That's right. what people don't get. It's not yeah. for the money. It's just you want to help people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's. I don't. I don't get paid to to go around and do things. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we do what we do to raise money to to help the guys that are that are in need. You know, the men and women and their families. Um, you know, and that. Yeah, I don't care if they wore you know green or blue. Mm -hmm. You know, our law enforcement. They're there are military at home so exactly. you know to us that's very important as well you know we do a lot for them we're helping a family in Waco right now that's going through some really hard times or you know a police officer family mm -hmm. and you know I mean it's it's important to help out all of them you know because without everybody working as a team you know I'm sure Jake said one tribe one fight mm -hmm. or one team one tribe whatever he yeah. says you know I mean it's it is it's we're just everybody we're a big dysfunctional happy family but it works it, yeah it works and you know it it works even better because of the great people of, of America you know because they they back us and they they support us and they understand you know and we owe it to the Vietnam vets mm -hmm. for that yeah, they were know, treated terrible. Because, yeah, they, they went over and they fought that horrible war and came home and got spit on and nobody su supported them just because they didn't understand. Yeah, and, and a lot of them were forced. Right, like, right. For the yeah. draft, like. Right. Yeah, I mean, Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, everything like that. I mean, it's 100% volunteer, you mm -hmm. know, so everybody that wears the uniform, they went in knowing, knowing what they were getting in for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so... Every time I see a Vietnam vet, I always make a point to thank them, you know, because without them leading the way and paving the road for us, mm -hmm. you know, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have the support of the public that we do now. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's important to me. Of course, we had to bring out the big guns. John Wayne and Jeff spent the afternoon showing me how to use some of the weapons they used overseas while defending our country. I leave it on oh, fire. Leave it off nope. I always leave the bolt to the rear on fire because right now it's impossible to shoot, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're ready to shoot, you just close the bolt and pull the trigger. All right, I'm gonna show you something real f cool. This is a, a ballistic app. No, I don't wanna rate you. Let's see here, 308 win. 
Yep, going straight out to five. Okay, now if you look through there, and mm -hmm. you you see the uh, the cross. There's a lot of stuff going on there, right? Yeah. All you need to worry about is the center dot. And, well, I know that. <laughs> right. We'll figure out where that center dot is. That's what you're doing. It's at the sky right now. Okay, so you want to remember to squeeze that bag. Let's see. I don't really. Okay, there. I see it. You see it? Well, kind of. I'm not on it yet. Five hundred. But. I think you're at the 300, so you want to go. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm go. at the casually short one. That's yeah. the one I wanted to be on. There's a big disc out there. There's a bunch of little targets out there, but you want the. Now, okay, now I just need to move over my bed. Okay. I see the big disc. Mm -hmm. Is there's like a, it looks like a rack and there's four things hanging off of it, and then it's on the ground, right? That's it. Yeah. So I'm going to just close the thing, and I want you to pull the trigger like you're about to shoot. Okay. Like, pull the trigger, like, shoot? Yep, act like you're going to shoot. Don't actually do nope, that. pull the trigger, yep. There you go. See? Oh. Want to make sure you're flinching or not. All right, now I'm going to I flinched. I know. <laughs> now, we're going to do it's that again. It's a lot of pressure. I'm shooting for our Marines in a green beret. No, no, you're good. Just relax. And then squeeze the trigger. Yeah. Look at there. Actually First hit round it. hit a 500, girl. Let's go up to two more. All right, so now the next one out, there's a big target. There's a little big square with a circle over it. Uh, go ahead and find it in here and then make it clear with that one. Okay. It's a square with a Mickey Mouse on top. Okay. Let us know when you find it. Actually, let's. Let's say I can't. Uh, I'm at the wrong one now. Oh, I see it. You see it? Uh huh. But you're obviously shooting the square, right? It might mm -hmm. be a dumb question. Is it but... uh, clear? Yeah. All right, you want to shoot the square? Sure. Why not? Why wouldn't we? Well, I just lost it now because I moved, but. All right, just get nice and comfortable. When you get ready, put that cross here right, maybe favoring a little bit to the left. To the left? Yeah, because you got a little bit of spin drift. That bullet's shooting seven football fields. So this is a right twist, so the barrels, mm -hmm. the bullet's going to start doing this. So, so just would you say right at the left. edge of the square? No, or? not the edge. Just same, you know, halfway between the edge and middle. Okay. And then the same way, just nice and easy. I don't think I got that one. I don't even know where that went. Yep. So let's go ahead and try it again. So get set up again. This is so easy for you, isn't it? Nah. You're lying. It's a lot easier for me to do the center. Do the center. Am I good? You're perfect. Just nice squeeze. Don't flinch, just squeeze. <laughs> I didn't even move that time, it still didn't even hit. Send it. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. You're All right, look through the sights. Okay. So, like, lean for, yep. like, lean I'm doing squat, the bend the my knees. Like that. Yep. Just pull the trigger. And then when you're ready, pull the trigger. Oh, gosh. It okay. ain't nothing. Okay. Oh, oh, look at that. Uh, scary gun. Was. Yeah, that All was right. easy. That wasn't bad. Yeah. All right, now. This is the fun switch. Bam. So I just runs. hold it. Yeah, you hold same it down thing. as you want to. Same okay. thing. Okay. So make sure I'm standing right, so I don't yeah. break my leg. You're not. Okay, ready? Let it rip. Bam. Woo! That was cool. How was that? There we go. That was bad. That was We're like gonna put it on safe. Isn't that awesome? That was High like five. battleship. You gave me Woo! battleship. That's moment. what I'm talking about. We're gonna lock that bad boy back up. That was cool. Take it out, nice and safe. Okay. Let me grab a hold. Get ready? a hold. Holy Toledo. So how tight do you like really honestly? I mean, hold it. Hold on to it. Hold yeah. on tight, yeah. Yeah. Hold it like you mean it. Yep. Got it. I mean, That's like what a hold, hold means. I know I know, but I'm just okay. Got yeah. it. All right. And then you just look out there, you're gonna be shooting at the two hundred right there. Oh, so okay? I'm actually shooting us in this time. Oh yeah, you're gonna shoot it. So uh, like again, this little guy goes like hand. that. Yeah. So you put your thumbs on it. Do I just hold down though, right? And hold down. And okay. the longer you hold down, the more ammo you're gonna shoot. Well, I don't want to waste all y'all's ammo. So. Try it. Do hold it down for a minute. Do like three seconds and okay. see how that feels. Okay. So I'm good? On you. Go ahead. So I lean forward mm -hmm. and then just push. Yep. Just push don't down. You, you don't, don't, don't have to overthink it. You just push yeah. that button down and freedom comes a, comes a roaring. Yep. Okay. I'm ready. Whew. Okay. This makes me nervous kind of. Don't be nervous. Don't be. If a Marine can do it, trust me. Exactly. Dude, that's a terrible analogy. Terrible. <laughs> okay. 
Right. I'm ready. Right. Everybody has headphones on. Let's go. Okay. Right. It's not going anywhere. Push. Push it harder. <laughs> harder. Hard as you can. <laughs> Woo! Do it again. <laughs> one more time. Come on now. Let it rip. Holy smokes. Last That's one. way easier. There you go. That's a way to get back in the neck. Isn't See? that awesome? Right. So now we just want to lift this up. Mm -hmm. Look at those. Holy crap. Just like that. Now it's safe. That is crazy. That one's my favorite. Obviously. Yeah. So what you want to do now is just put your finger just like that and just nice squeeze. And shoot the grass, all right? Yeah, yeah. A little higher. A little. Wait, am I supposed to hit the target? Hit the berm. You hit the berm. The, the mound? Yes, yeah, 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 got it. That's go. why they. There you go. That's kind of cool. What's real fun with these, hold on, keep doing what you're doing right there, uh -huh. keep looking through there, is just doing something like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right. I love how you get so excited. It's yeah. like, love it. It's like freedom for you. Yeah, then you just throw that out, do all that cool stuff. There you go. It's so weird to see a suppressor on that little thing. So let's do that. Okay. How do I do it? Like, what's you the proper wanna, way yeah, for yeah, you to well, do it? First, you want to put your finger there. Yeah. And then with this side, put mm -hmm. your hand just like, nope, nope, mm -hmm. just like that. Just Got like it. that. Perfect. Now you want to kind of just like that. Lean Perfect. Down. And just when you pull the slack out, mm -hmm. you feel that one? I'll go ahead. You see that feel the, the, yeah. the wall? Uh -huh. That's when you start aiming. Okay. All right. Then whenever you aim, pull the trigger through. Okay. Can I shoot? Or go no? ahead. Yep. Am I supposed to be shooting at the grass? The Whatever grass you stuff? want. You can shoot the steel at this. I don't want to shoot it because I don't want to. Is it, is it, are y'all worried about ricocheting? Nope, nope. No, not at all. That one's really not bad. Either. Isn't it awesome? Ready, set, fire. I'm out. I wasn't out. You ready? Ready, set, fire. Looking good, baby. America. America. Go ahead, just like you did the other one. Okay, but I put it up here. Yep, you're gonna put it. You want to get this hand way up there, just like that. You want to get this hand just like that. Okay. All right. Now I'm it's going to. It's forward, isn't it? Yeah. Let it go, go forward. Now it's on full auto. So just go through there. Nope, nope. This is gonna kick just like a gun or a rifle. Oh, so geez. go ahead and let it rip. Try it again. Jesus. God. <laughs> Thank God you're holding me. How awesome Holy is that? Sick. Yeah, that you're... is cool. How awesome is that? Give me some. Yeah. You're awesome, literally. What? I love how you every time just throw it. Like. <laughs> what? I'm talking about? Throw my ears. It's too. a wrap. Jacob and Jeff are two veterans that John Wayne continues to work closely with. Along with Jacob and Jeff, John Wayne works with veterans through 22 Kill, the American Valor Foundation, and the Green Beret Foundation. If you want to join the Tribe of 22 Kill or the American Valor Foundation, we encourage you to visit www.22kill.com or www.americanvalorfoundation.org. This time of year is all about giving what we can, and who better to support than those who have put their life on the line for our safety and freedom. One of my favorite quotes is, Christmas is a spirit of giving, without a thought of getting. If you cannot give, instead give a valid effort to promote optimism this season. Be a part of something much bigger than yourself. It costs nothing to be a decent human. I'm Alexis Bloomer, and I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I encourage you to be the finest America has to offer.